I love that Yvette picked that song, I Surrender. Amen. Because that's all the Lord is looking for. That's it. He's just looking for people to surrender to him. Amen. Let's uh, turn in our Bibles to Colossians, first, Co first Colossians, chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm oh, sorry. First uh, Corinthians. I'm sorry. <laughs> first Corinthians. Forgive me. Uh, I'm going to actually, I didn't get to tell Aaron this, but Aaron, I'm going to have you read for me, brother. Could you come up and read for me? All right. Thank you. I'm throwing him on the spot. I didn't let him know. But the Lord said, be ready in and out of season. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 We're going to, uh, can you read uh, verses 1 to 7? Moreover, bro <coughs> Excuse me. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant how that all our fathers... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did I say? First, did yeah. you say First Corinthians? Um, you said Chronicles. I'm sorry, yeah. That's what you I mean. messed up everybody, huh? Let's read verse. Chronicles? Yeah. Chapter 10. Sorry, start in verse 1. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, wait a second. If you got a. Jimmy Swagger Bible's on page 694. <laughs> Alright, let's do uh, verses 1 to, um, to 7. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down, slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul, and after his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was wounded of the archers. And Saul said, and said Saul, then said Saul to his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. So Saul took a sword and fell upon it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise on the sword and died. So Saul died, and his three sons and all his house died together. Mm, thank you. What a word. <laughs> Did you catch that story? Yeah. What When I read that, when the Holy Spirit led me to that verse, I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? What do you want me to say to the people, Lord? But the title even of the chapter says, uh, The Death of Saul and His Sons. And I said, Lord, well, how do I put a title to this? How do I come up with a title for this? It's such a heavy story. And the Lord actually gave me opposite of what you would think. He said, God's way is life. His way is life. And I said, Lord, why would you give me a title for this? We're talking about death. His sons are dying. The Philistines are upon them. They are dying. The sons have lost their ways. And then Saul takes his own life. Lord, why would you tell me, avert, why would you give me a title for this? God's way is life. I don't see any life in that. In verses as I read it. I was like, Lord, where is the life? And the Lord wanted me to go and read that. But he said, Nye, he asked me a question. He said, how did Saul end up in the place where he was at? How did he find himself in this battle where he's fleeing for his life, but not only his own, his family and those who served him? How did we, how did he get there? How did he find himself there? And I don't know tonight, maybe you're in a place tonight where the Philistines are upon you. I don't know what your Philistine is. I don't know what your battle is. And I don't know what's going on. But I know sometimes we find ourselves in a place of death. And we find ourselves in a place where there's sorrow and there's no hope. He said in verse 3, he said, the battle went sore. Right. It took a turn for the worse. And sometimes we find ourselves in that place. And I don't know if you've ever been to a place so close where you're like, Lord, I don't even see the point of living anymore. I don't even see the purpose, Lord, to go forth. Right. But the word of the Lord tonight that he's given me for you, he says, God, 
God's way is life. Amen. Amen. His way is life. That's right. And you will live if you go the way of the Lord. Amen. And you will have victory over your battles that you're struggling with if you go the way of the Lord. But how does Saul find himself there? If you look in the Bible, let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse, <clears throat> verse 1, it says, Then Samuel took a vow of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over, the, over his inheritance? Let's jump down to verse 10. I mean, verse 8. And you shall go before me to Galgal. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And behold, Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto you and after burn offerings and sacrifices and a peace offering. Then seven days shall you tarry till I come to you and show you what you shall do. Verse 9. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. That's good. And all those signs came to pass that day. Mm. Yes, Lord. And verse, verse 10, it says, And when they came hither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met them. And the Spirit of God came upon them, and he prophesied amongst them. And it came to pass when all who knew him before saw that, behold, the prophet among the prophets. Behold, he prophesied among the prophets. And the people said to one another, This, uh, what is this that is come unto the son of, I'm going to say Kish. Kish. And they said, Is Saul among the prophets? The Lord anointed Samuel. He told Samuel to go and to anoint Saul for a purpose, to be the leader of the house of of Israel to be a leader over God's people. Now, even how that even came across was a messed up because God's people didn't want the Lord to lead them; they wanted a man to lead them. Right. But even so, God was so merciful they, that He sent Saul. But I love this: He anointed Saul, and not only did He anoint him, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon him. But in verse nine, He said, "As soon as as soon as Saul turned." It says, as soon as he turned away from Samuel, God gave him another heart. <clears throat> God has given us another heart. He's given us, as soon as we said, Lord, I believe, forgive me of my sins. He immediately began to do a work in our heart and he made us a new creation. He said that you are mine. You no longer belong to the world. You are separate and called to me and you are all mine. And as soon as Samuel, just, as soon as Saul Chose to listen to the words of Samuel and he turned to obey. God changed his heart. Amen. I want to declare tonight, as soon as you make a decision to listen to the word of God and turn to do what God has called you to do, he is already changing your heart. He is already leading you in another direction. He is already guiding you with another mind, another heart, another spirit. But it's when you listen to the word of God and you choose to turn and go and do what he's called you to do. He's asking us to be a church that not only hears the word of God, but to be a people that do the word of God, that live the word of God, that believe the word of God and turn to walk it out. By grace, it's only by grace. Right. It's only by his mercy. But thank God that he's anointed us. Yes. We is, he has anointed us. He's given us the Holy Spirit. Yes. And as soon as Saul turned around and went his direction, the Lord changed his heart. He met up with the prophets and he started prophesying. Man, they were having church. Yeah. Hallelujah. They were prophesying the word of God. They were encouraging one another with the word of God. And the Holy Spirit was able to move. And now even in verse 11, the people said, who is this man? Who is, is that the son of Cush? Is that that same? Is, is, who is that? Right. Is that Saul with the prophets? Mm. Guys, that's what the world should be seeing with right. us. Right. As we go out of this church and we hear the word of God yeah. and we say, Lord, have your way. And he changes our heart and we go and do what he calls us to do. The world should be like, 
Is that, oh, oh, is that Angela over there? That can't be the same. Is that Shari? Who is that? Who is that? That can't be the daughter of Shari Galbraith. Who is that? That's my mom's name, Shari Galbraith. But they couldn't even recognize him because he heard the word of God and he applied it to his heart yes. and he believed yes. and he walked it out yes. and the Lord changed yes. him. Yes. It wasn't anything he did. Yes. He just made the turn to obey. You don't have to change your heart. God is the heart changer. God is the one that can fix it. God is the one that can mold you. God is the one that can break a stony heart and give it a heart of flesh. He's the one. You are the vessel and he is the one that will change what's inside of you. As he pours his Holy Spirit on you. Yes. What a testimony. They couldn't even recognize this man Saul anymore. The world should not be able to recognize us. Right. Our old friends we used to run with and those we used to go smoke in the back of the store or whatever you were doing. The ones you were chilling with on the corner. They should not be able to recognize you. Right. I don't even want to recognize me <laughs> from what I used to be. That's right. I don't even want to recognize me from last month. How about that? Come on. How about yesterday? This is, yeah. How about yesterday? Come on. How about five minutes before I walked in the door? Yes. How about two seconds? God is on a yes. moving and yes. changing power. Yes. And he yes. wants to change us, guys. That the world would not recognize us. That we would not even recognize ourselves. What a powerful testimony. Do it, Lord. But sad to say... The chapter that we read before, that's not what they were saying. How did Saul get from a place of prophesying to not even being recognized because an anointing was all over his life to a place where they said, Saul has fallen. His house has fallen. How do we get from A to B like that? What happened? Your heart turned another way. Your heart turned another way. Hallelujah, your heart turned another way. What happened? Your heart turned another way. We turned our eyes off of the Lord. He yes. stopped hearing the word of God and being a man of faith and going to do it. When he was hearing the word of God, he chose not to hear the word of God. And he chose to go his own direction. And he chose to do his own things. And he chose to forsake <clears throat> what God has called him to be. Because the word of the, the, word of the Lord was still there. And between all that. Samuel was still speaking. The word of God was still going out. God stayed the same. But Saul chose not to believe it and chose to hear his own voice and chose to hear his own desires and his own things and go another direction. And he chose not to hear the word of the Lord and he found himself back at verse 10. He found himself with the Philistines at hand. And the Philistines, they were fighting against Israel. And the, the men of Israel, they flee from before the Philistines. And they fell down dead at Mount Gobble. Mm -hmm. In verse 2. And the Philistines followed them hard after Saul. And after his sons. And the Philistines killed Jonathan. Can I say this? The family is, is, is so crucial. The family unit is so crucial. The world is trying to destroy the family unit. He's trying to destroy a mother and a father. He's trying to destroy the relationships with their children, with their fathers and their mothers. But the word of God said he will turn back the hearts of the children to their fathers and then also the father's heart back to their children. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. But the devil is fighting hard. And verse 2, it said the Philistines, they followed hard after Saul and after his sons. Right. The battle that you're facing, if you think you're struggling, you think you're having a hard time, how much more so for your children? Right. How much more so is the, the devil fighting after the souls right. of your kids? Right. He's fighting after your family, your wives, your husband. If you're in the heat of the battle, believe it, he's doing it to your family. And God is asking, will you be one to protect your family? Come on. Will you stand in the gap for your family? Will you be the one? It was the righteousness of Moses that was able to save his whole house to be able to go into the ark. Mm. 
He found only one righteous, but because of his righteousness, the Lord protect his whole family. Will you be the righteousness of your family? Will you stand in the gap for your family that they all might be saved tonight? Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Because we, 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 we get so caught up in our own battles and our own struggle. But guess what? Saul wasn't the only one there that the enemy was fighting hard after. In verse 2, it said, and after his sons and our daughters and our mothers and our fathers. He's fighting hard. Yeah. This, is, this is not some simple thing. This is life and death. He right. is fighting hard and right. he's fighting right. for keeps. Right. The Philistines weren't playing. Right. They were coming to destroy. The enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. All that the Lord has given you. All that the Lord has promised you. Right. Come on. And the Philistines killed Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan was close to David. He was after he he knew that the Lord anointed David. And he had a heart for truth. He even saved David's life at one point. He was like, get away. My father's coming to kill you. But there was something in Jonathan that had a little bit of hope, a little bit, and he knew truth. But I'm pretty sure because his father and the life that his father was going, it was, it was easier for him to forsake the truth and go the direction of his father. And verse 3 so the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers, they hit him, and he was wounded. He was wounded. I don't know if some of you might be wounded tonight. You might feel like you've been in a battle for your life. You might be battling for your marriage. You might be battling for your kids at your job, whatever it may be, in your finances. But I'm telling you tonight, you hold on to God. You hold on to God. You hold on to his promises. And even if you're wounded, you get up. If you got to drag that leg, you drag it and you find yourself at the foot of the cross. Don't give up. Don't give up because God's way is life. Even if you find yourself in the wrong direction, even if you find yourself going in the direction of yourself, I'm telling you, if you turn around one more time, I believe with all my heart, Saul would have turned around one more time and cried out to the Lord, he would have saved his life and the life of his sons. Right. Sure. And your struggle, if you just turn around and say, Lord, forgive me, and you choose to go the way of the Lord, God's way is life. Amen. God's way is life. This ways of the world is nothing but death and destruction. God's way is life. Verse 4. And then said Saul to his armor bearer. An armor bearer was one that was supposed to hold your armor when you were in a battle. That's supposed to be like your right hand man. They're supposed to be making sure your knife is sharp. You ready for the battle. They got your shield. They got whatever that thing you got to throw. I don't know what that's called. Yeah, they got that. They got, I mean, they got all you need. Whatever you, whatever you need, they got it. I mean, it's ready. They got it right. A armor bearer is supposed to be like your, your right hand man, but not only that, encouraging you to win the battle. There was a point when Jonathan was David's armor bearer, and those two went up. When everybody was in doubt and fear, Jonathan and David, Jonathan and David went up, and Jonathan was like, "Get him, David! Get him! The Lord has given us the victory. Let's go up!" And he was like, "Let's go!" Just them two killed hundreds of men. They were believing together. They were believing together. Come on. Be careful who you let hold your armor. Be careful who's your right man. Be careful. Because if they don't know who they are, if they don't know the power of the Lord, then how are they going to encourage you to fight this fight? Right. How are they going to be like, look, use this weapon. You need this shield. You need this. You need this two-edged sword. Be careful who you are placing your armor into whose hands you are placing it. Right. Do not place your armor in the hands of your finances. Uh -oh. Do not place your, your armor in the hands of a relationship that you know you shouldn't be in. Mm. I'm talking to myself. 
Do not place your armor in your own strength. Right. Because we will fail. Amen. We will fail. So Saul looks over to his armor bearer and he said, hey, draw the sword. Get your sword and kill me because I am done. I'm finished. This, and he was saying it because he didn't want to get in the hands of the wicked. He didn't want to find himself in the hands of the Philistines. So he said, take my life. But it's like, Saul, you were playing with them all day long, doing whatever you want to do, playing with it. You ever play with fire? And he was just playing with it. And then all of a sudden, everything's burnt up. And now we're like, oh, my goodness. But Saul was the one doing this. Can I say this? It might have been the Philistines that were killing him, but they were his enemies. But the greatest enemy in the battle that he lost was the one in his heart. That's how he found himself in the place that he was. That's really good, man. Because he lost the battle in his heart. Mm -hmm. See, it's not the drugs that you're battling with. It's not that thing that you're trying to get victory over. It's not that whatever it may be that you're fighting with. You are battling with your heart to a place of surrender and trusting in Jesus' power to give you the victory. That's your fight. That's your battle. It's an inward battle. See, all this stuff on the outside, smoking and all that, and all that garbage that we do, and then we're trying to get away, and we're trying to get victory over it. That is not what you are fighting. That is not your battle. The battle is inward. Yeah. It's your heart. Right. It's your heart. You're battling your own desires. You're battling your own will. You're battling your own truth. You're battling your own pride. It's you. It's me. Right. All that stuff is just an outward appearance of what's going on, what's in the inside. That's all it is. It's just showing you that there's something in the inside that the Lord needs to change and he needs to touch. Sadly to say, and, and Swagger says it so well, he said, <coughs> he said, he started so well, but the conclusion was poorly. He fell to defeat the enemy within, which were self-will, jealousy, pride, and the enemy without the Philistines defeated him. So he failed to recognize the battle inside. See, he was trying to defeat the Philistines. He was like, if I could just kill all these Philistines, if I could deal with all this stuff outwardly, then it would be done. Everything would be fine. No, because his heart Right. has been changed back to his own ways right. because his heart have left his first love because his heart have left the word of God and chose to listen to his own counsel and go his own direction because of his heart yeah. so he was trying to defeat the Philistines but the Lord was saying I want to change your heart yeah. but he refused to repent and he refused to go the direction that the Lord was calling him and he found himself at the end of a sword, taking his own life. Because the things outwardly were becoming too overwhelmed. Sometimes you ever been in that place, you're dealing with so much stuff outwardly in your marriage, in your family, in your own struggles outwardly. And like Aunt said earlier, Aunt preached at the Bible College, and she, I mean, she preached the house down. It was excellent. She was talking about when you're in the fire and you're trying to get loose and you're trying to get victory over something, it's like the enemy just turns up the fire hotter. It just gets hotter. The more you're trying to get victory, the more you're trying to get away from this thing, the heat just turns up even more. Because it's not that thing. It's an inward heart. It's an inward place. And she was saying Jesus was in the fire in the midst of them because they chose to believe. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they chose to believe that their God would give them the victory. So he asked his um, armor bearer to take his life. The armor bearer didn't, so Saul took his own life. And there as well, the armor bearer followed. I don't know how much more I could stress to you. You, we, we affect our family. What you do, how we choose to live our lives, we affect our family. We do. I would love to say, I don't owe, no, owe nobody nothing. I don't owe anybody anything. This is just me and how. No, what we do affects our family. 
your children, your marriage, the church. We are the body of Christ. But yet there's hope. Amen. There's hope. Come on, girl. God gave the title of this, God's way is life. Right. His way is life. Right. right. His will is life. Yes. His way is life. As we surrender to the will of God, as we surrender to his ways, you will find life and you will find life more abundantly. Amen. His ways is life. And as Saul did in the beginning of his walk with the Lord, as we listen to the word of God and we choose to obey, the Holy Spirit will fall upon us and we will begin to prophesy. Hallelujah. We will begin to prophesy in our families. Yes. And those dry bones will begin yes. to rise. Yes. Those circumstances that you found yourself struggling with for days, they return from death to life as we choose to surrender to the Lord, as we choose to turn and listen to the word of God and walk the way he's called us. There will be life and a testimony. Hallelujah. Come on, I. Or we can choose to go our own direction and find ourselves in a place of Saul. The way, God's way, is life. Like I said, I'm not going to be here before you long. I believe the scripture has spoken. The story of Saul's life has spoken. Will we choose life tonight? Will we choose God's way? And if you found yourself in a place where the enemy is coming after you and nothing but death around you, all you have to do, my friend, is look up. Call upon the name of the yes. Lord, and you and your whole household shall be saved. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. You and your whole household.